There's been a not-so-secret plan to take away the American dream from young people for the last several years. Just in the last year or so, really, these news stories just started popping up to how many investors in Wall Street have been investing in real estate, basically turning all the affordable homes in the United States into rental properties. But they are on a counterattack with many blog posts and other types of media to make them look like the good guys creating more affordable housing options for people since we have such a lack of supply. So today we're going to be going over some of their articles that revealed their secret year ago, how they're trying to spin it into a positive. And then at the end, I want to get your opinion. Are these Wall Street investors really trying to help the average American try to find the most affordable housing option with their rental homes? Or are they just cashing in on people's desperation because of the shortage of supply of homes that are available to everybody? You let me know what you think when you watch this. So this is homeowners.com. It says, are big companies really buying up single family homes, making the leap from renting? Let me read you a couple little sentences because this is the part that there's like, kind of blowing my mind. A common perception today is that more than ever, large faceless investment companies are purchasing houses in the masses and converting them into rental homes. If true, this would mean that large swaths of U.S. homes were being swallowed up, resulting in a more competitive market. They're saying if that was true, but we know that's true because that's exactly what has happened in many, many areas. In this article, we intend to delve into this myth and look at the hard data and to determined the faceless investment companies are buying out all the single family homes in America. We know that most of the investments that have been done by large investment firms are not gonna be in a rural small town in America. We know that they're happening in major cities, but they're spreading out throughout the country. According to the data, as of 2022, investment companies take up about a quarter of the single family home market. That number should be alarming. Specifically, investor purchases accounted for 22% of all American homes in 2022. This number number slightly decreased last year of 2021, which was 24%, with over 90,215 homes in the third quarter. Over the last decade, the number of investors purchasing homes has increased from 10% to 15% each year. They're making a lot of money because we have a shortage of supply. And it goes on to say, except for 2020 to 2021, according to the study by Redfin, saw an increase of over 80%. So yes, investors Investment and residential real estate companies are purchasing more and more of American homes each year. Well, thank you, today's homeowner. But you just said that, that, you know, it was a myth. This isn't true. Your own article is contradicting itself. How long have home investors been buying single-family homes? Until early 2010, institutional investors in America's homes focused mostly on large multifamily structures like apartment complexes. That all changed during the Great Recession of 2009. And what happened then was all these homes that went into foreclosure closure because they had all these weird loans and then the jobs market tanked a lot of people went through that foreclosure process that meant that there was a ton of homes on these banks books so they turned to the investment companies and said hey you offered these loans take them off of our books so those big investment firms like BlackRock ended up coming up with this plan which was go ahead and start invitation homes and tricon homes we'll buy all your homes in bulk we'll fix them up with a little pad of paint and then we'll turn them into rental properties that one decision ended up changing the whole real estate market altogether because it ended up being a cash cow that they never expected. Single family homes have been consistent investment opportunity in many companies' portfolios. Now you know why this article made me so incredibly mad because we know home investment companies, they're buying up the most affordable homes that normally the first time home buyer would purchase and guess how much they care. Willie hears ya. Willie don't care. I know that's shocking. The pandemic was a colossal shift in almost every industry across the globe. And the housing market was no different. Home buyer preference radically changed from years before. In previous years, certain demographics like millennials flocked to the metropolitan areas for work. But, but once the pandemic hit, a work from home trend blossomed. They fled to tech centers to the suburbs. As a result, corporations began purchasing and building new homes to keep up the pace. And you know as well as I do. They've been doing this build to rent thing where they go up to a home builder and say, hey, I know that you don't feel very confident in the housing market right now. Because if you look at the builder's confidence, it's down for the first time in like six months. But what we're going to do is since you already had the plans to build this neighborhood, go ahead and build all the houses. And we're going to go ahead and purchase every single one of those homes in the neighborhood. We're going to maintain them. We'll be the HOA and we're going to have them to rent. Now, in some cases, they can be homes that they rent that they can purchase at the end of their lease 
lease terms. But in most cases, they are just strictly just to rent. It's just one of those ways that corporations are really not our friends. Just FYI, in case you didn't know that. Why are companies been buying up all single family homes? One major misconception about the investor buying myth is the big faceless companies are a large force in buying homes. That's not a myth. <laughs> Large corporations certainly play a hand in shaping the market. They only make about 3% of American home sales in 2022 and only 1% in previous years. So that means they're ramping up. They're buying more because it makes them more money. And I guarantee in a few more years, it's gonna be four, five, six percent We gotta nip this in the bud now. Today, we see hedge funds, private equity firms, insurance companies, real estate investment trusts, and even your mom and pop landlords taking a more effective interest in the rental housing. I'm not worried about your mom and pop investors. They're only owning a few houses, right? They're not affecting the housing market in a way like a investment firm that owns an entire neighborhood where they're determining basically by owning so much real estate, how much rentals are in the area. When looking at Wall Street companies buying up homes, you have a small list, small list, of corporations that have shaped and grown this trend. One of the first companies making waves in the market is Blackstone, just a small little investment firm, just a tiny one, right? Blackstone's capital in 2021 was $880 billion. So if you have a retirement fund, most likely you have it with Blackstone or BlackRock or even Vanguard, that's another one. Out of that $880 billion, one third of it came from real estate. Which states have the most investor sold homes? Another misconception of this myth that homes are being bought equally across the United States. You guys are smart. You know they're not buying houses in the same places. I know in my little area of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, they're not buying up as many homes as they would in like Atlanta, Georgia. But they really wanna push that idea in this article. In reality, investment groups are far more focused on carefully monitoring trends that influence relocation. Those relocations bring home buyers and you're stealing them from home buyers to turn them into renters. I mean, honestly, at this point, they should make some kind of regulations to stop this nonsense because it's getting out of hand. As such, areas with heightened economic growth are seeing the most interest from investment companies, specifically in states along the Sun Belt and Southeastern coastline. Arizona has the most build to rent. Here's a quick rundown of the top 10 states with the highest investor share of the most homes sold in 2021. This data comes from CoreLogic. So Georgia has 33% of single family homes were purchased by investors. Arizona is 31%. Nevada is 30%. California is 29%. Texas is 29%, which surprised me. Utah is 27%. And the following four states are sitting at 26%, which is Idaho, Indiana, Missouri, and New Mexico. So that's 10 states that over 20% of the purchases of homes are done by real estate investors. To me, that that is alarming. And I realize if you live in South Dakota, that probably doesn't seem that alarming to you. But if it's happening here now, that doesn't mean it won't happen to you later. In Ohio, they have addressed this. And in some areas, they have literally stopped construction on some of these build to rent communities so they can offer these houses to people that actually want to purchase. So let's get to the closing thoughts on this article. Unfortunately, the belief that corporations are buying up all the homes in America and raising home prices holds some truth. Oh, thank you for finally clearing that up. However, if you have equity in your house, you'll be able to borrow against it in case of emergencies. People do it all the time. And if you don't own a house and you never have the opportunity to own a house, you'll also never have an opportunity to build that wealth. Vox came out with this article in 2021 and it said, Wall Street isn't to blame for the chaotic housing market. This article made me mad. Housing prices haven't yanked the dream of home ownership out of desperate clutching hands of millions. It hasn't. So countless people don't even have the dream of home ownership. I'll buy that. But a good portion of people that are renting would love to purchase a home. They can't because interest rates are high and a lack of inventory. On top of it all, the rich keep getting richer. The stock market is booming. Homeowners have accumulated more than $1.5 trillion in equity since the COVID-19 recession began, and personal savings are up for higher incomes. Some people are furious over reports of institutional investors increasing their demand for homes and pushing home prices upward. This is true. The Wall Street Journal wrote earlier this year that yield-chasing investors are snapping up single-family homes and competing with the ordinary Americans. Marketplace reported the same, noting that one buyer had been outbid six times 
times by all cash offers. Consumers are increasingly competing with institutional investors. And Real Deal goes even further, claiming that main reasons for skyrocketing home prices are actually a huge buying spree from institutional investors. I don't like that quote. I'm just going to tell you right now, that isn't necessarily the whole reason why home prices went up, but it's definitely part of the reason we are smart now. We are seeing what's going on and more institutional investors are buying up single family homes. Yield chasing investors have turned to the real estate market because it's become very profitable that pre-existing housing shortage created by local governments and certain homeowners seeking to block new homes from being built. Holy crap. They're blaming local governments for not having enough homes available and that's why they're buying up all the houses? Unbelievable. I don't think institutional investing companies necessarily are make the greatest landlords in the world. Not like your mom and pops. So back in 2021, Realtor.com had an article that came out about the death of the starter home. And I just want to read you this one quote from it. And it said, there were only 300,000 starter homes on the market in September. The roughly 72 million millennials ages 25 to 40 make up more than one third of the housing hunters scorning the market right now. This unprecedented demand exasperated by the COVID-19 pandemic dwindled down the supply, driving up prices pushing up starter homes further and further out of reach. So let me explain some of the ways that people have been fighting back against these foreign investors because it's actually pretty interesting. And there is some bills in play that need to be voted on that could help curb some of this Wall Street investment. So this is according to Bill Track 50. And it says, last year, in an attempt to cool off the housing market, the Canadian government imposed a ban on foreign investors from buying homes in Canada for two years. In Singapore, they implemented housing policies to protect citizens with they have a 99 year lease instead of actually purchasing. They've bought from the government and the public housing sold. But the bills here in the United States are they have the Stop Wall Street Landlords Act. It was introduced if passed would impose a tax on selling transactions to make it more expensive for single family rental companies with more than a hundred million in assets to buy and sell homes. The bill would also prohibit Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and Jenny Mae from purchasing security mortgages held by institutional investors who use debt to buy single family homes and then rent them out for profit. So that's just one act. Okay. California Neighborhood Revitalization Partnership Act requiring California Finance Agency in its consultation with the Department of Housing and Community Development to finance affordable housing to low and moderate households revitalize neighborhoods by damage foreclosure crisis. A couple bills in Texas, the bill aims to prohibit investment firms from buying single family homes until after they've been on the market for at least 30 days. And I have suggested this be a thing as well across the board. I don't care what state you're in. Investment firms do not get the first bid on the houses. Let the public decide if they're going to purchase the house within 30 days. After those 30 days, then let the investment firms come in and make their offer. So if you're wanting to know what your state is doing as far as addressing the investment firms, you can go to this website, billtrack50.com and see if your state is doing anything to help with the investment firms taking over your areas. The lack of supply is the problem. If we allow institutional investors to continue to buy up all the single family homes, even if it's only in a few areas like Atlanta and those other 10 markets that we mentioned earlier, that doesn't mean that it isn't a problem and it shouldn't be stopped. But that is just my opinion. You let me know in the comments section below if you think that institutional investors should be stopped from buying homes, all the single family affordable homes in your area. To watch more videos about the affordability crisis here in the United States, you're gonna wanna watch these videos right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.